Hey guys, today is December 3rd, 2020. I'm Kimberly Jolly from Fat Quarter Shop and I have missed you guys. Um, haven't been here in a while. We did release the last two blocks as a live stream for Socialite. So if you want instructions on how to do those, I did film those and Lily released them for me. This week we're on block 11. It's called Cheer and it was designed by me and my sister. So I'm gonna kind of jump right in. We have a ton of stuff today. And I think this block is gonna, it's very, um, maybe intermediate, but I think it's gonna take a lot of time. So let me kind of show you um, what we have today. So these are the three blocks that I made previously. They're size nine, six, and three. And I use the Homestead collection that's here by April Rosenthal. And with that collection, I added this background the SKU is 20708-36. It's from the On the Farm collection. And you can kind of see the, po there's a polka dot. Let's see. There you go. Now you can see the polka dot. So that is what I used for these. Now, this pattern, Socialites, comes free. You just get the information on the Fat Quarter Shop website. We give instructions for 9-inch six inch and three inch completely free you can have a lot of fun with it you can change the you can change it to where the colors are inverted you can do lots of stuff with it so these are my three blocks and at the very end of socialites program i'm going to sew all three into a quilt i'm going to keep one and i'm going to auction two of the others for make a wish yay so these are my blocks i've been keeping all of these in this bag which is our serendipity bag so you can see all of my previous blocks in here and I'm kind of just keeping them in the bag so they stay nice and flat so I'll put that in there and these are the ones that we've already shown online my other ones are still in a box so there's those blocks so put that aside and I'm going to show everyone else's blocks so this is, Ther this is uh, Teresa's block, quotation is the collection by Zen Chic. Um, a lot of that fabric has sold out. Um, I kind of noticed over Black Friday that sold really well. This is Deborah's block, Figs and Shirtings. And you can see both of these are the three inch block and they pressed differently. So Teresa pressed open and Deborah pressed to one side and they both look great. So you can, you know press and stitch however um, you think is best for you this block is by Terry this collection is folk tale by Layla boutique this block is by Sue and this is the shine on collection by Bonnie and Camille and I love it oh my gosh I love it so those are the six inch blocks and then this is a 12 inch block that Angel made out of cider by Basic Gray. So you can see with this sew along, we have made it to where the design will really work with any kind of collection. Um, whether you like modern or contemporary or traditional, it's gonna work with any of them. So I'm gonna kind of jump right in to block 11. I'm gonna take it from my little binder. So this is our Socialites binder. And this is the fabric I'm gonna to use today. I um, pulled this out. I just used like page protectors, or what are these called? Page something, page protectors. Um, and the reason I did that is they're easier to come in and out and I didn't want to hole punched. I didn't want to get into the instructions. And so this is the fabric that I picked for today. And you can see it's it's a bunch of scraps because I'm kind of getting down in my scrap bin to the, to the remnants. So this is kind of how I'm keeping everything. And so you can see that I'm kind of getting to the end of my stash. Now what I did do is I put together all the blocks that I made previously. Lily had to text me the picture twice for me to be able to figure out um, the placement. And I have a very small table in the entryway to my sewing room. 
and I got it at Hobby Lobby and it holds all my thread and I wanted to see how this would look, 10 blocks. And just to see like, could I add borders? You know, what would look good? Well, this is the exact width of the, of the table, but the length, I need about this much more, like four or five inches. So I thought it was gonna look funny to have a border on one side. So I've decided to go ahead and make two more blocks add it and then just have it quilted so the next two blocks that i'm going to do are going to both be three inches with my leftover oranges that is um from all hollows eve and then some random uh kimber bell and um, some bonnie camille fabric so i'm just using kind of a random amount and then after the next two blocks we'll move on and do different sizes because i know you want to see like a nine inch and a three inch um, and you can see right here when I put them together, I did not press open. I just pressed to one side. And um, I don't know, I was kind of in a hurry. And I kind of feel like when you start getting blocks together and you press open, it just becomes too much. So that's where I'm at with this. I did think this was going to fit. I did think it was gonna fit and look better than it did. So on today's block, if you're going to use the triangles on a roll paper, which is the way that I piece, you can do this the traditional way, which is how this is written. If you want to use triangle paper, you can use for the three inch block, a one inch finished triangle, half square triangle. And we have this in two rolls. One is like H100, which is the bigger one. Or if you want a smaller one that has just um, singles across, this is PC100. So this is for pre-cuts and this one is just for yardage. So again, if you're making the three inch, you would need the H100. If you're doing the six inch like I am, you need a two inch, which is right here, H200. So I'm gonna use this one. And if you're doing the nine inch block, you need H300, which is three inch finished. So Lily was nice to get these all out for me. So I'm gonna put the two that I'm not using away. I've got um, everything on my little board right here. Oops, sorry. So um, this is kind of my general, if you haven't watched before, this is kind of what I'm using to just do the blocks. I use the seam roller. I try not to use the seam ripper. I've got some scissors. Um, I love friction pins, alpha bitties, and um, this little creative grids ruler that marks um, squares. And then I've got a my rulers. This is one and a half through seven and a half inch square. And I'm going to go ahead and mark off. Okay, so this is labeled beginner. I'm going to mark out the nine inch. and the three inch, because if I don't, I will end up cutting the wrong thing, um, because I always do, I already know that I will. So this is what we're cutting today, and doing that will really help you kind of make your eyes go to the right place. Um, so first I'm going to iron my fabric, since I haven't done that, and I will to answer questions before I start cutting, um, just because I did not iron these and like i said i'm kind of doing this one more scrappy where i just take stuff from my stash this is all just leftovers so uh, we had a question from char ferraro asking where you got your basket uh that you're keeping your scraps in and do you know the measurements of it yes i do know all of that this is from Container Store. I've had it, I know they still carry this, and I've had it um, older than Emma, so 14 years. Yeah, I've had this forever. So wow. this right here says Container Store, $9.99. I'm sure it's more expensive now. Yeah. The SKU number says 10065092. And let's see, it is 10. By 14 but I know they still sell that brand I think it's their um, 
like the brand that they put together. And we had had some new members joining as we started the live stream. Right before we started, Becky Frederick joined. Welcome, Becky. And Joella Brazil is also a new member. Welcome, Joella. And Jennifer Meese is also a new member. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you. And I saw Peach get excited at the beginning of the live stream because her little member icon is a turkey right now. Because they're still set to the oh. Thanksgiving icons. Oh, okay. The holiday ones are coming up. So on this, you can see, I use this for a different project. I'm pretty sure I didn't use it in this. Let me look. Hold on. Yeah, I didn't use this in this project. I used it in something else, and I fussy cut. So when I made the little table runner for my bedroom out of the three inch blocks from social lights i fussy cut so that's why you see that um but today i'm not gonna fussy cut so um i do do that it's so funny yes. i haven't even looked at this fabric in forever okay so let's see I like to do my um, four patches, um, nine patches, any kind of patches different than most people. I'm probably going to confuse you guys, but I'm going to do it the way that I do it. I'm going to go ahead and cut the B and E. It says eight, one and a half. So eight times one and a half is 12. Three, six. Yeah, 12. So instead of 12, I'm going to cut instead of one and a half by 12, because that would give you eight one and a half inch squares. I'm going to cut like one and three quarters by 13. And I'm going to go ahead and put the fabrics together like this and cut. So I'm not cutting squares. I'm going to do more of a strip. So. We have this ruler right here. So I'm doing this, I try to strip piece anything I can. So I'm gonna cut kind of here. And it says cut one and a half, so instead I'm gonna cut one and three quarters and I will explain why later. Now you can do this the traditional way this is just a way for me to save time. So I'm cutting one and three quarters. And I'm gonna leave that together. I cut them intentionally with the right sides together. And this is my B and E. So I'll put that there and just kind of set it aside. Put it on my design board. Do you want another design board? That's all right. Yeah, maybe. And then my A and C. So you're going to see when I'm cutting, I kind of, thank you, I kind of go by the instructions. I don't just start cutting. Any pattern I do, whether it's my pattern, a des another designer's pattern, I go in the order of the pattern because I want to see what's most efficient. So I've cut B and E. And I can, I can just check that off. And now I need to make four half square triangles that finish at two inches. This says to cut two three inch squares. So I'm going to do the triangle paper and cut two squares off the triangle paper. Put my fabrics right sides together. Let's see if this is, I don't know if this is, yeah, it is white enough. Let's see. Um, right sides together. Now you can see there's a little bit of salvage here, so I'm gonna go away, move my paper away from the salvage so that this little, on the salvage, you can see little dots. I try not to get that in my finished block. Put these together. 
and just trim this off. So that is my A and C. And if you don't want to have the alphabetes, you could just do like this. This is what I do sometimes. And then it says A slash C. Mm. Sorry, so that you remember and then you don't have to use your alphabetes. Mm -hmm. And then I need to cut one two and a half inch square of the print for the center of my block, which is right here. So I can kind of fussy cut that. So I'm gonna take a two and a half inch creative grid square ruler and kind of play with it. Um, I like this flower. So I'm gonna put, if you look at a Creative Grid Square Up ruler, they have this little white line and that means that's the very center of your ruler. So whether you're a two and a half or three and a half, you can see they put it in the center. So you don't have to think. So I'm gonna put the center dot right there. It's like a little dot in the center of the flower and cut around it. And so that's fussy cut. I mean, it's not, it's not necessary to do that, but it's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. So, now I'm going to go ahead and piece. So what I will do here, I'm gonna move my alphabetes off of here. So what I'm gonna do here is first, with an open toe foot, I'm using Arafil Color 2000, and on this, I'm gonna use a 1.5 stitch length and stitch on the dotted lines. Then I'm gonna change my foot to a quarter inch foot and just stitch all the way down here with a quarter inch seam. And when you're stitching this, you don't have to be very accurate because you're gonna trim down, so you can just go really fast and not worry about it. So those are the two things I'm gonna do. And with this one, I'll stitch with a 2.0 because it's just a regular seam, and this I'll do a 1.5. So I can answer questions, or you can tell me what you had for Thanksgiving. Oh, yes. Uh, what did I have for Thanksgiving? First, I'll go through comments. Vanita Nance said, funny story. I heard your theme song while in the car. I stopped in my tracks and said, wait, is Kimberly coming on the radio? What was the theme song? Uh, our like, do, 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 oh, do, oh, 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 like our loading song, I That's think. That's funny. Uh, and she says, turns out it was a McDonald's commercial. Oh, really? That's hilarious. That so, is funny. Yeah, that, that can happen. They, they might have gotten the music from the same place we got it. Yeah, maybe they can hire me to do a McDonald's commercial. <laughs> do you like McDonald's? Um, I like the filet fish. Okay. Is that I, still a thing? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, I love that. Yeah. I mean, I haven't been there in a long time. There's one right by our house. We mm -hmm. hardly ever go. One of my kids loves it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and the others don't, so we usually don't go there because he gets outvoted. Yeah, that's fair. I'm partial to the quarter pounder myself. <laughs> that's and good. A few people were commenting on the noises the iron was making, asking if it's doing all right. Uh, yeah. And Nita Brake said, LOL, the iron sounds like a video game. I think it's when you do oh. the steam. It's, it's just a little squeaky, but she's good. Yeah, no, she's, it's working good. Yeah. Don't jinx it. That thing gets, yeah. that thing gets feisty. That's funny. And then we did have some super chats that came in from Valeria Bauer for $19.99. Thank you. Thank you, Valeria. And Valeria put a little pair that says, thanks for being you. And it's looking at itself in the mirror. Oh, thank you. And then... So on this, I'm just going to show you what I really do at home. This is what I really do. Oh, wait, hold on. Somebody's messed with my machine. Hold on. This is what I really do. Sorry, I just wanted to go fast. So now I'm going to trim here. I'm going to trim on all the solid lines and I can answer any 
questions. I mean, we've done half square triangles a million times. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Terry Alger says, I'm so grateful for all the hard workers at Fat Quarter Shop and love all the live tutorials. I have learned so much since I have started quilting in May. Wow. Oh, wow. Thank you, Terry. That's very nice. And we got a super chat from Marianne Lucas for $5. And Marianne put a pear that's laying on its side and says, how's it going? Oh, thank you. Hi, Marianne. It's going very well. Excited to be back doing live stream. I know. I was like nervous yesterday. <laughs> I was not as nervous today, but it's... I think when you get in a routine, you just kind of get used to it. And then when mm -hmm. you get out of it, you're like, oh my gosh, I really go on the camera live. <laughs> yeah, this morning I, I was a little nervous since I hadn't done it in a while. Just double checking everything. But yeah, it's hard. Yeah, all to... the links were in the right places. All the buttons were supposed to go to the right things. So now I'm going to press, let's see. So on this, I'll press to one side first, then I will press everything open. So here, I'm going to just press down flat and then press to one side. I got a lot of sewing done um, over the break. I can't show you any of it yet because it's for next year, but oh my gosh, one of them, um, I think Lily's going to love it. It's in my office if you want to see it. It's just Ooh, folded up. Yes. It's yeah. huge. I got it all done in like two, well, not really two hours, but it was pretty quick. Okay, so I've pressed to one side. I'm going to trim off my little dog ears before I press open. I just whack that on the floor <laughs> so when I'm doing this I do try to do them kind of on top of each other so it just kind of keeps the heat going on the bottom one do, do, do. Mm -hmm. and put this to the side it's pretty hot and I'm going to put a clapper on it. We should be getting more this month. And this one, I'm going to set my seam, press to one side, and then press open, and we're going to trim it down. here and then we'll trim it down we have a question from connie stanley and connie says i'm new to the triangle paper what sizes should i buy for which triangles not sure how to ask okay so lily can you zoom in kind of right here yeah please so when you look at a pattern there you go and it says this is the unfinished size so one and a half two and a half, three and a half. You want to take the unfinished size and take off half an inch. So that would give you one inch finished, two inch finished, three inch finished. Another thing you can do, this says cut three inches and then we're going to trim down. So if you look at this paper, you put your ruler it should be two and seven eighths. And two and seven eighths is really close to three, you're trimming down. So if your pattern says two and seven eighths, which is they usually give you the exact size so that you don't have to trim down, you can always measure here to make sure it matches your pattern. Mm. And we do have a triangle guide 
triangles on a roll guide that gives you a lot of information and it's got lots of um, columns and will really help you. Mm -hmm. So when we did this, we had one and a half inch square. So this was supposed to be a one and a half inch strip. We cut it bigger. So this with the seam from the outside of the seam should be one and a quarter because this is a quarter inch seam. So I'm going to trim one and a quarter from the center. So I've got my one and a quarter right on that center. I'm going to trim that. Go to the other side and you need to be one and a quarter from that side, which would be two and a half exactly. So just cut that. And then you're going to sub cut these down into eight one and a half inch segments. So I usually go to one side, trim off to get a straight edge. And I'm going to probably cut first three inches and then one and a half. I usually cut the bigger size. I usually start with the bigger size and then sub cut down. And I think it would be really fun, like if you were to retreat or something and you could like do it the traditional way and then your friend could do it this way and then you see which one is faster. So now I just need to put these into four patches. So you just flip them. And we're just going to sew those together. So to do that, I will just probably pin all of these at the same time and then sew them at the same time. So I will put, because we're pressing open, they're not, the seams don't necessarily nest because there's not one to one side and one to the other. So I get them as close as I can in the center, pin right in the center, and then I pin at the end. Now when you're pinning, if your seam starts coming apart right here, you just want to lower your stitch length so that that doesn't happen. So I'll pin these and then we'll sew with a quarter inch seam down. A few people were wondering if the live streams for quilting were now on Thursdays. No, I have something that, um, conflicts tomorrow. Yes, but we will be back on Fridays next week. Yes. Okay, so now I'm going to just sew down these with a quarter inch seam. And when I'm sewing, I'll remove the pin right when my needle gets to the pin. I try not to sew over pins. Some people do. And I will just chain piece them together. Colleen Marty was wondering, why are you trimming now rather than at the finish for it? Because I'm just, um, I'm just trimming this because I made my nine pat or my four patches bigger. So I'm trimming because I cut them bigger. Now, if you would have cut one and a half inch strips, you wouldn't need to trim. Mm -hmm. I just like everything to be very exact. So that's my way to get it exact. So my seams all match. I will trim at the very end also, but. 
Oh, there's my blocks. I forgot about those. They're hiding. <laughs> now these are like super flat. I mean, yes. they're super flat. So people ask if that thing, if the clapper really works, and it does. I wish I had it 10 years ago when I didn't know about it. So I'm going to press this flat. It's raining outside, so you'll have to forgive the. It's really windy. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, it is so cold outside. I about died walking in here. <laughs> we have, we're kind of on a hill. Mm -hmm. And oh my goodness, I was like, oh. Because I had a bunch of stuff in my hands, and I was like, please don't let me drop it. <laughs> I put some of those reindeer antlers on my car just to make it Did cute. It and blow off it, it, they haven't but they there's so much wind resistance now from them that i can feel the wind even more oh. so this morning was not fun like driving down the freeway and just feeling them like blowing around yeah i'm hoping they don't blow off we'll find out now here this is really hot so i'll probably do this and then come back and use the iron so i don't burn myself This is the seam roller by Lori Holt. Leanne Ballard is wondering, why do you press the seam open? So on this quilt, I am pressing it open because of the way the finishing is, and I will show you that in one second. But you can see like Deborah didn't, so you don't have to. I like to press open because my blocks get really nice and flat. Okay, so I'm gonna put these like this, put this on here, and I will show you the finished diagram. So on this quilt, this is our coloring sheet. And you can see that when you start putting the blocks together, you will have a lot of seams that touch. Like for example, that touches. Things will touch right here. So you don't wanna have a bunch of bulk and when you look kind of, this is kind of an example of how they start looking when you put them together. And you can see that a lot of seams touch. This one didn't and this one didn't, but these did. So if I was trying to put that together and I had both seams going this way, it would just be really hard to put together. Now, if you were gonna do this and just put sashing and not have blocks touch, I don't think you would have to press open. And also, especially like with a three inch block. Where'd the three inch blocks go? Oh, here they are. So like with this block, for example, it just gets really small. So when you get it really small and you start having big seams and a really small block, it gets kind of bulky. And see how nice and flat that looks? So especially when you're working with really small blocks, anytime I'm doing something super small, I will press open and anything like this where there, I mean, there's no way to figure out that math where everything's gonna touch. So now we can put our blocks, my block together. Ooh. And I will show you two different ways you can do it. Now we can follow the instructions just like they are. I'm just kind of following the diagram. I like to use these Lori Holt design boards because then I can take it to my sewing machine or to my iron, etc. It doesn't move. You can make these yourself and we have a video on our channel on how to make them. It was one of the very first videos we ever did. I think Lily was probably still in high school when we did that. <laughs> You'll have to look at the day and see. So there is how it's supposed to be. So I'm just gonna, well, I'm not gonna check it. I'm gonna reverse it real quick and then check it. Another thing you could do to make this different is, I'll just do it real quick and show you. You could easily you could put a white there. Ooh. And if you put the white there, you have more of a star. And 
So you could do that. You could flip these. You could flip those so that it's more of an X with the fabric. One, two, three, four. You could flip this so it's kind of going a different way. Mm -hmm. You can do a lot with this. So this one, I'm going to just put it back how it normally is. And I'm going to decide if I want to have a light center or a different center. Another thing you could do is this. Let's see. Let me try to pick one that might look good. I'm going to try this. You could add a third color. Ooh. To the center. And so you'll be able to see at the end Lori's block. And Lori did three colors. You have Lori's block in yes, there, right? Yes, I do. Okay. So this, you could put a diff totally different color there. So there's a lot you can do. So see how Lori did it? Perfect. So Lori did hers where the dark makes kind of an X. She's got a friendship star and she's got another color. So she's using four colors instead of two or three colors instead of two. And she's using her prim fabric collection. So that's super fun. Mm -hmm. And that X print is a... B backgrounds. So cute. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave my block just like it is. I'm gonna save these two squares that I just cut for my scrap bin that has two and a half inch squares. I'm going to double check again against this. I'm gonna do, I kind of look at it like the white goes this way mm -hmm. and the white goes that way. And then I just check each half square triangle. And I'm going to stitch down here. So what I will do is I'm going to go ahead and pin these. And then we'll stop and press. And then we'll add the next one. So I'll just put one pin there. And this print is, I will say, is a little bit busy. This um, orange is a little bit busier than I normally would do. But I had the fabric, so I went with it. Okay, so now I'm going to stitch down with a quarter inch seam. Oh, I also have uh, Barb and Mary's block to pop up. Oh yes, perfect. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. So that's their brand new fabric collection. I think it's called Jingle, mm -hmm. and it is shipping next May or June. It's so pretty. And it's really cute. Um, the colors are awesome because they're traditional Christmas. Mm -hmm. I will leave this chain together while we press and then just leave this on my design board and move it to the side. First press to one side and then we'll press it open. It's pretty hot, so I'm gonna kinda wait so I don't burn my fingers when I... Yeah. We had a question from Brenda So-and-so. Is there a secret to ironing the triangles open? I try to use the edge of my iron like you say to, but my iron wants to get stuck at the crease. It's like the square doesn't want to unfold. So I would put the tip of your iron so let's see, this is a triangle right here. Instead of starting right here, start maybe a quarter inch in and make go down and then out. Or use the seam roller, make it flat and then try. And I think, you know, that's something that is gonna come with practice. Mm -hmm. Now with my design board, I make sure I've got everything going the right way because if I come back with my design board and do this, my block is gonna look really bad. 
So I'm gonna make sure I've got it in the right spot. At this point, I do clip the little um, chain pieces and then I'm gonna go down here and chain piece this down. Amanda McDonald is wondering, will Lori's cozy Christmas fabric be restocked? Yes. Ooh. It's still in print, and we should have more bundles in January. Um, the very first collection, some of those SKUs are not in reprint, but when she did it a second time, those are all in reprint. Those are all being reprinted by Riley Blake. So I will leave that chain together and press. And then I have a super chat from Barb Collins for $4.99. And Barb says, I heart, heart, heart your lessons and website. Kimberly and Lily are awesome. Aww. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it, Barb. Yes, it's nice to be back. It's... Mm -hmm. It's weird to not do a live stream on a Wednesday or Friday. Yeah. And we have lots of stuff coming up in the, the next year. Oh my gosh, I'm already thinking about what we're doing next year. And Ooh. I've got to, I told Lily, I have to figure out a way to make a calendar that keeps me organized. Mm -hmm. Because I've already started like some of the quilts and I'm like several of the things that we're gonna be showing next year. But it's hard when I do it and then, cause I have to do stuff in advance. I can't do it the week of because then it becomes stressful and work. So I try to plan it out ahead. And we have so much next year that it's gonna be a lot. Mm -hmm. So here, I'm gonna, oops, cut this apart. I'm gonna pin these together. So to pin, I will usually start on both ends. So the left end and the right end. I don't always do it this way, but this is sometimes what I do. And then I'm going to look like, does anything touch between the seams? No. So then I'm just going to do the intersections that do touch, which is right here and right here. So I will just make sure they're in the place that I think they should be. Some people pin sideways also. So some people do pin this way and that's okay. I pin up and down for whatever, you know, whatever reason. There's no right or wrong way to pin. So I'm gonna stitch down this side. We'll see if my seams match, and they do. So I'm gonna iron that. You can add the last row if you want, or iron first. It kind of depends what kind of mood I'm in. On what I'll do, if I'm in a hurry, I'll just do whatever's fast. If not, I'll do it kind of like this. And I'm not in a hurry because I have nowhere to go. <laughs> Robin Williams had said, Lily, you gals are doing a fabulous job. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Robin. Also a great name. And Robin Jones was asking, can Tim Kimberly tell us what skews or names of her favorite tone-on-tone -tone white backgrounds are? Okay, we're going to have to do a blog post on that. All right. Because we keep getting that question. Now, I have listed my favorite Bella Solids. Mm-hmm. And we do have that, 9900-200 is my favorite and 97 is my second favorite. Those are the, well, those are the two I use the most. 
We can do a blog post on the backgrounds I like can, if somebody emails me. Um, but what I do prefer when I do a background, I prefer stuff like this where there is nothing going on. Or like this where nothing is going on. I prefer these type of very light prints. So with backgrounds, it's really hard because they come in and out of stock. So this one, you know, it's with a collection. So it's a one-time run. So you either get it now or you don't get it. Um, I always like the B backgrounds by Lori Holt. Mm -hmm. And I do like um, fig tree backgrounds and Bonnie and Camille backgrounds when they put them in their collections. I mean, I guess we really couldn't do a blog because I don't know. Everything kind of comes and goes. Mm -hmm. But you can see with this collection, when you look at the backgrounds, you will not see one that doesn't have a lot going on. They have a lot of prints. And I don't like anything very busy at all. Mm -hmm. So that's too busy. That's mm -hmm. too busy. Everything's just too busy. Mm -hmm. So I figured out a collection that shipped around the same time as this found a great white and it's not the exact same you can see it's much it's wider than this mm -hmm. but when you look at my blocks oops <laughs> oh did it get caught yeah it did when you look at you can tell the zipper's getting caught in my block so I might need to stop putting them in there um I this is you know the white is next to the red so it's not right next to this I don't have a background next to it, so you, that's why you can't tell the difference because you're not putting it right against the white. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could do it as like a once in a quarter live stream segment that you tell us what your current favorite backgrounds are. Okay. That sounds good. You'll have to email me and I'll have to figure out. Mm -hmm. The problem with that also is I have to order enough. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, okay, so I've got that pinned. I'm going to stitch down here. And my seams match, or they, you know, the white, everything kind of nests. So nothing's, no points are chopped off, I guess. And I will press this. Now, looking at this block. This is not fabric I would usually use in this block, this orange, because it's very busy and you lose the design. But with what I'm doing, I don't know that it's gonna look that good with this because it's not popping out. So I might redo this. It's just looking too busy. So I'm not loving my color choices today. So I'll probably redo this and something else because it's looking too low volume-ish. But that's okay. I'll still finish it. But that's okay. When you make something and you don't like it, just redo it. Which is what I'm going to do. And actually, I won't um, throw it away. I will use it on the back of my quilt. Yes. So I will probably, I'll show you what I'll do. Maybe I can do the backing on the live stream. What I will do with this, I can already tell you, I can already tell you what I'm going to do with this. First, let me trim it up and then I'll tell you what I'm going to do. And I do this when I make a block that I don't like, but I will not throw it away. I have to find my seam rope, my um, rotary cutter. Yeah, sorry. Um, oh, I have it. Sorry, I got it. Sorry. So here, I like to just trim the edges off, just so it's nice and straight. So I'll go ahead and do that as a live stream. That'll be fine. I'll do a live stream where I show you how to do the backing for the table runner that I'm doing. So with this, probably what I'll do is on the back, just pretend that's I'll probably do this block kind of in the center. I'll put something with my name down here from the Sweetwater Label Company. I'll probably put something around that and then I'll just put other fabric around. So this will just float on the back. 
and I'll redo another one for the front because it just does not, it does not look good. Okay, so let me know what questions you have on the block. Okay. So we've actually been getting a lot of questions about okay. several upcoming fabric collections and when they're due in. To We're going to do that at the end. Okay. And on the, go to the bottom again. Oh, yeah. That needs, there's, I have some stuff that needs to be fixed before I can do it. So um, I need some of, yeah, some of that I need fixed before we can talk about it, but yes. Okay. We're gonna do that at the end. Sounds good. Linda Stimmerman says, the Bella solids, can you verify that there's not a front and a back? I'm always afraid I have the wrong side up. I don't think there's a front and a back. I don't. The best way I've ever heard it explained to me was from Jocelyn here, who said, if you can't tell, I can't tell. Okay, yeah, there you go. Yes. Okay. Uh, for Leanne Ballard, what is your rule of thumb when purchasing your fabric from a collection, such as do you purchase yardage from each item or just a few pieces? So I try to only buy something if I'm gonna actually make something with it. That's like a very strict rule that I have, except sometimes I don't follow it. So with, okay, for example, Lori Holt, with anything Lori Holt, I get a half yard of all of it. Um, that is because I am in contact with Riley Blake and they send that to me. And then I always make with Lori stuff more than one thing. Um, now if I'm going to do something, my other two designers that I use the most are Fig Tree and Bonnie and Camille. So I will just figure out what pattern I'm going to use, what works best with it. My very favorite pre-cut is a layer cake. And if I'm going to buy a background from the group, I will buy somewhere between three and five yards. But I do try to only buy if I'm going to use it. Now, I don't always follow that rule, but um, I try. Mm -hmm. And then we had a super chat from Jenny Bartolo for $4.99. And Jenny says, do you always sew standing up or is that just for the videos? Oh, that's just for the videos. <laughs> no, at home, I definitely sit down. And when I'm at home, what I do try to do is I try to do everything at the same time. So all my half square triangles at one time, all my four patches at one time, all my ironing at one time. I try to be very efficient. So I was telling Lily, I made, um, next year I'm going to be doing something. I don't want to tell y'all yet exactly what it is, but um, I made the very first block and it was 36 inches square and it's huge. It's huge, but it's the very first block in what I'm doing. And it really didn't take me very much time. I mean, I can get a ton done quick. Like when I'm at home, I'm kind of, I'm most comfortable. I'm usually by myself or my kids and I'm just like very relaxed. When I'm at work, I'm not relaxed because I'm on camera, someone's watching me, you know, but at home I can just like go crazy. And I do work best. The one thing that I found, I do work best in the morning on quilting. So I try to, on a Saturday or Sunday of each week, I get up early for me, like 7, 7.30, and I just try to cut a whole quilt or a whole block, do all my cutting in the morning. Now, I can sew any time, but cutting, I can go more fast and more accurate in the morning when I'm rested. And also, my house is a lot quieter in the morning. Kevin and I said, we have decided that we've trained our kids to sleep in a little bit because we're they're older now, so we're letting them stay up till whenever, like midnight. I mean, on the weekends, like who cares? They don't have school and they don't have, there's no sports. There's nothing to go to. So it's like at this point, whatever. So now they actually sleep in until like eight or 8.30, which is nice mm -hmm. when you have kids and they wake up at six, that's not fun. That's funny. Uh, also, if you guys wanna see how Kimberly actually sews at home, you can go back to our like very first live streams when we were doing it at Kimberly's house and see that. Yeah, now I will say my sewing room is a lot messier now because I don't have to keep it clean. That's funny. So it's kind of become, right now it's the Christmas gift hub. Not for my kids or my husband, but you know, like I've got like just gifts kind of piling up. Ooh. Okay, so we're going to take a break. All right. Is that good, Lily? That's good with me. Okay, we're going to take a little break. And I'm going to go figure out what I need to figure out for that question I need to answer. And I'm going to find my mask. Every time I start, I say, I'm going to put my mask where I know where it is. <laughs> and every time I can't find it. Yeah, here it is. Okay, so I will be right back. And then I'm going to go figure that thing out that I need to figure out. Intermission time. 
with Lily. Hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Lily. As most of you know, I'm behind the camera, usually the voice. Uh, but I get to do these intermissions now, which I love. I uh, wanted to update y'all, tiny, tiny update on my journey to Nebula, which I've been showing on the live stream. Uh, I just brought the projects that are fully done so far. I have three more that are all cut and in the process of piecing. And I just found taking those back and forth from work to home, I would lose a lot of the little pieces that I had already cut and like um, put where they're supposed to go. So I will show you guys everything that I've done next week for that. Uh, but just to show you the first project, oh, there goes the pattern. First project was Seaside, which was a table runner. She's all rolled up right now. I keep referring to different things as she's. It's fine, they're, they're all she's. Um, and then this was the Lucky Charm pillow. Uh, you can actually see there's a, oh, over here. There's a tiny stain because it's actually been in use in my house. Uh, this is the napping pillow that usually sits on my couch now. And then this one's nice and clean because I left it at work. And it's right here, this is Jawbreaker. Uh, I've pinned the pattern to it so I don't lose it. And there's that. And I've been working on some other things for work that I can't show or talk about right now, but those will be coming up very soon as well. And then the other thing I wanted to show you guys was Kimberly had asked about my Thanksgiving and what I got to have for Thanksgiving. So I actually had Thanksgiving with the uh, uh, members of my household, which was my boyfriend and his brother and his cousin. Um, and so I made a ham for the first time. I've never cooked a ham before. Cooked a turkey for the first time a few years back. This year we had ham, and so my boyfriend, is, his name's Cruz. Cruz is also a filmmaker like me, but he's very much into like images and like the cameras and the lighting. So when I asked him to take a picture of me in my nice dress holding the ham, he of course, even though he was taking it on his phone, had to make sure the lighting was perfect, everything looked great. So I'll show you guys the final product. That's me on Thanksgiving with my ham. Yes, I am aware the ham is sideways. It's supposed to be the other way around. Uh, but that is a dress my mom gave me. That is my kitchen. And like I said, Cruz took this picture of me. And this is the behind the scenes of it. That's... Oh, my word. <laughs> First of all, kitchen's a mess. Uh, there, You can see the stuffing on the side there, as well as some cauliflower mashed potatoes. But that is his brother and his cousin holding up a, a reflector diffusion so that the picture and the lighting would come out very pretty and you can see my dog's tail sneaking in underneath down there by my feet <laughs> but yeah that, that was my thanksgiving it was really nice uh the ham turned out very good apparently i brought some for ashley the day afterwards and she said she liked it as well so i'm very proud of my ham and kimberly's back are there any questions <laughs> He's like, oh, I don't know where to here, look. Um, they yeah. just said, uh, yay, Lily, you made pillows. Yay, yes. Very comfy pillows, very fluffy. Oh, it says, can we see the table runner? Oh, yes. I can show you guys the table runner. Let me, uh. Sorry, I was looking at your pictures, not the questions. Oh, you're good. That's all I was like, oh, I forgot to put the questions up here where I could read them. They say, you look beautiful, Lily. Love Aww. your heels. Thank you. Yes, I've had those for a long time. I think they were from JCPenney. But yeah, sad as the table runner. She's very, very busy. And after the holidays, there's a table runner I have on like my TV console. Uh, this is gonna go there after I take off my holiday table runner. Yes. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm gonna hand it back over to Kimberly now, but thank you for having me. Someone said they need a film crew at their house. That's funny. That's hilarious. I mean, sometimes we are a mini film crew between the two of us, to be honest. All right. Do 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 do. Oh, and I should have sent a picture of my kids on Thanksgiving. I didn't even think about it. Oh. Yeah, for Thanksgiving. So what I did on Thanksgiving, since Lily talked about it, um, we have to work on like all weekend and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I have done the full meal, but I don't really like to. So, and also with the kids right now, all of um because of space in our house, two of the computers that they do schoolwork on, because they're still not back in school, is on the kitchen table. So Kevin was like, do you really want to take all those computers down, unplug everything? So we went to a restaurant. It was just us. And for Christmas this year, we're just going to do, um, Kevin's mom doesn't want to do Christmas because she's too nervous. 
um, she is quite older, so I totally agree. So we're gonna try to figure out a way to do a Zoom Christmas. So mm -hmm. she decided yesterday we weren't gonna do um, that. So that's fine. We're just gonna try to figure out how to do it where we can still open presents and do it on the computer. So that'll be fun. It'll be kind of crazy because there's a lot of us. Um, so yeah, we went to a restaurant. It was really good. Um, I had the I talked to the kids and I told them what I want for Christmas is for them to pick a charity and donate in my name. So they have to research it and they have to tell Kevin because obviously he's going to do it for them because they don't have money <laughs> um, why they picked it. So that's kind of what we did for Thanksgiving. We usually at Christmas will do not thanks the Thanksgiving. The weekend after Thanksgiving, they usually do Blue Santa in Austin, but obviously this year they're not doing that. Um, so we usually do that and pass out gifts, but this year we're not able to do that. So that's why I kind of came up with that. Oh, okay, sorry, let me move the computer. I mean the computer. Yeah, just move it to the side. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you, oops the other stuff. So I did finish this and this is the Sherry McConnell free block of the month she did for this year and she has released the last block. She did several block sizes so you can decide what you want to do. I did obviously 12 six inches all the way, sorry 12 six inch blocks all the way around the center and that center that is a fussy cut 12 inch fabric can we do the upper camera okay thanks so this is fussy cut this is not applique it's just a fabric and I used uh, Lori Holt's farm girl vintage book and I'm gonna cover the instructions and I put it into this setting so I took Sherry McConnell's free 12 inch blocks and did them here and in the center I used this applique motif from Lori Holt. Now this collection is called Vintage Happy 2. And that's the front. And um, I use this background from the collection and it's words. And I just had the words go every which way. I didn't worry about the direction of the words. On the back, I had a lot left over, kind of like I talked about. I usually start with a half a yard of all of her fabrics. And when I'm Kind of when I get home, one thing I do is I'll just, I don't really plan my quilting, I just kind of do it. So the day that I was doing this, I hadn't even thought about the backing. I just put the quilt together and I thought, well, I want to finish and I have plenty of fabric. I just don't have a big enough piece for the backing. Like I didn't have a long enough piece. So this would have been 30 inches. So I would have needed like a yard, a yard and a half, yard and a quarter. So I just took and made some squares. And I took, this is a label. I'm in the label club from Sweetwater. I added some background fabric and just sewed it in the middle. And then Gina Tell quilted it and she was so great to center this. So when I made the backing, there was more over here, like more squares. Um, but this was a way for me to use up, you know, most of my fabric. So this is a free sew along. And thank you to Sherry for doing that. She usually does one every year, so I'm gonna actually email her today and ask her if she's doing one for next year. Because if she is, then I will also do that. Anytime I find out about a free sew along online, I try to participate if it's my style or you know if I can fit it in my schedule so that I can show you content that is out there that is free. So this is done. The other thing, I wanted to let you know that the Bonnie and Camille sew along from the quilt, um, oh, sorry. Okay. We're getting used to doing this again. <laughs> um, so this is the Bonnie and Camille Quilt Bee, brand new book that we were lucky enough to publish for Bonnie and Camille. This front cover is called um, Shine On, and I made this. So I am not gonna show you the quilt, the blocks each time because I made them and they're in the quilt. So what we can do going forward is have the quilt and show whatever block we're on. And Thimble Blossoms is actually hosting it. So you want to go to her Instagram, which is Thimble Blossoms for all the details and all the blocks. And I know a lot of people 
so there's the quilt. A lot of people were talking about the B quilt, the B block, which is right here. And so my tip for this block, I'll give you my tip, is, let me find what page it's on and then I'm gonna give you my, my tip. And let's see. Okay, so my tip is, I'm gonna cover the instructions. So this is the block. When you go to piece this, you could pay attention to the direction of the rainbows. Can you zoom in a little bit? Mm. If you care. Now, some people don't, but I did make sure all my rainbows went the same way because I made this block. I was a little OCD. It doesn't matter. You can do that. You don't have to do that. But my biggest tip is make the center. After you make the center, cut these strips half an inch wider. And then when you attach it to your block here, you can use a 14 and a half inch square ruler to trim it down, or you can find the center of your block and just kind of measure over and get it to 14 and a half. But adding the G and the H as a bigger size will give you a block that comes out the correct size. And you can see right here, these, these two, no, they do look right. Okay, I see what I did. So these are all going the right way, but right here, these are not. And that's okay. Like, it's not a big deal. So that would be my tip on that. And so I want you to join us. Um, our block of the month for this is sold out. This fabric is in stock, though. You could start it with a fat quarter bundle. You won't have enough for everything, though. And the book has a lot of stuff. We've done a trunk show on it, but oh my gosh, there's so many quilts in here. I'm gonna kind of flip through. So many quilts in here that are just beautiful. So um, Bonnie and Camille made all of the quilts in the front of the book, and I made the quilt on the cover. And the quilts in the front of the book are from the blocks in the back of the book, or I guess you could go the other way, The blocks in the front of the book or in the sampler in the back. Mm -hmm. And this one, I actually made the week the book came out using scraps. And um, someone had asked earlier about what I have. So this, I used leftover layer cake squares of just random Bonnie and Camille fabric and made this. It was super easy and there's a piece backing. And then this was the beehive blocks where um, a lot of you sent in your blocks. And there's a Bonnie version and a Camille version and then we listed your names. So we just want to let you know that that kind of started. Another thing that I wanted to show you is I got this back. I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. So Lori Holt's brand new book, Prim and Proper, just came out and we're doing a sew along with it. And I loved the pillow in it. So I decided to just make a pillow and that is kind of just this little section right here. Mm -hmm. It's also Let's see. It's also just in the bonus project section. Mm. So, this is I used the strawberries and rhubarb collection from Fig Tree Quilts. It's coming out next year. This is all leftover that I had from Designer Mystery. So, and um, she was so nice to put this green rick rack in. Mm -hmm. It was actually Gina's idea. She texted me and I was like, oh yeah, for sure. That's awesome. I know, so it's awesome. And then she put it into a envelope bag. So I just wanted to show you guys that. That's from the brand new book. So anytime you see a book, you can think outside the box and you can use scraps to make things like this table runner or this pillow. You can use leftovers and just collect them. You don't always have to, when you get a new book, you don't always have to buy a new collection. The other thing that I also made with this collection, which is the third, sometimes I go a little crazy when I like a collection. Sometimes, a lot. So I love this collection. This is what I made the Designer Mystery 2021 out of, and I just love it, and I loved this pattern. So I decided to make it and offer it as a quilt kit next year. So this is coming out next April. And Gina Tell also quilted it for me. I love the quilting. Mm -hmm. And we will have a quilt kit with this. 
and I did show it to you before I quilted it and I showed you how wavy remember how wavy it was it's not wavy now so when she put that tight quilting on there it fixed my waviness so the tighter the quilting the more it's gonna fix it <laughs> so Gina quilted this for me so we will have a quilt kit this is a Joanna Figueroa pattern again ships next April and this is what I did for my backing so uh, this was actually left over from Designer Mystery. And you, I made a bigger border here to fit. And the reason why is I didn't have enough here. So I had to, so I will hand draw my backing to figure out if I have enough fabric. And this again is a label that I purchased from Sweetwater. And I'm almost out of them. I might have to sign up for two memberships now because I'm almost out. So I did finish that, that's super exciting. And then we have some other things that we have released recently. The first one is quilted ornaments. So we took Socialite's three inch blocks and made ornaments and put them on the blog. Can you tell me who made these? Nova did. Nova, okay, so Nova, look at how great these look. So I bet Nova's gonna have a fat quarter shop Socialite's tree in her house. Mm -hmm. And it looks like she used grunge yes. and everything she did is on the blog. So we just wanted to kind of highlight our blog post and let you know how on the blog, there's a lot of content mm -hmm. that you can find. And these are all free blocks. If these aren't out yet, they will be. And she just used the three inch block on the blog. She tells you how she um, put them together. Mm -hmm. So that's super fun. So you could do a Christmas tree. And then we did get these back in stock. This is the Safety First masks. And this was put together by Moda. And we went ahead and made these and just wanted to show you. This one's funny. My kids would love that snowman face, Santa Claus. Just to show you that we have the panel back in stock now this will probably be the last time we have the panel mm -hmm. and there are two sizes you get either you get some smalls and you get some larges but since we made them um can you tell me who made them uh i think it was elva okay so thank you elva for making them and if you want to sell me one you can sell me this one for or these this i have a son that would love that That's funny. it'd be cute to put the naughty and nice is like a front and back of one. My twins. <laughs> well, my twins could do it. Well, you know, the one thing is I realized how much we don't leave the house because we couldn't find masks on Thanksgiving. That's how often my boys don't leave the house. So, um, but they do have basketball. It started It's tonight. It's the second mm -hmm. time. So we'll see how that goes. So we do have a video on how to make these masks. Yes. Sorry. It is called safety first. Yes. And I just wanted to kind of show you this one more time. I love it. I am working on the, um, we're gonna have a um, cross stitch quilt along, and then we're gonna have this as a block of the month. This is called Sew by Row, and Lori handpicked her B basics and B backgrounds, where the buttons place and everything. And this was made by- Teresa. Teresa. She is an awesome, I think she sews better than me. So um, I just wanted to show you this one more time. If you want to see the cross stitch, we featured it on the Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube this Wednesday. And Jocelyn just got the sample in, which is the Sew Day needle minder that goes with this. It's by Lori Holt. It's on our coming soon page, but we just wanted to show it to you because it came, you know, we got a, it's called a prototype is what they call it and i will be on this quilt we're going to do a sew along where i actually bring my blocks and kind of show them to you mm -hmm. and the sew by row sew along starts in march for both quilting and cross stitch now the quilting and cross stitch will not go at the same time because the block of the month is monthly and the cross stitch pattern is already out so they won't be very matchy matchy but that's okay 
and these are Lori's buttons. And in your kit, you get the buttons, you get the floss. Let me show you the other stuff. You get the floss yes. to do this. Look at how good she did. It's so good. I know. Go, Teresa. Can you even? I need to go. I need to take some lessons from her. <laughs> She's really good. I mean, you cannot tell her piecing from mine. It's amazing. Yeah, she's next level for sure. Yes, okay. So serendipity, I wanna go over this one more time. Here it is. Sorry, we have these carts and then we move them around and then <laughs> they play hide and seek. So this is our serendipity bag. It's to hold your blocks or cross stitch or anything. We have the um, charm, the butterfly charm. We also have a needle minder and the quilt is behind me. So the charity is going, the charity quilt along is to benefit Make-A-Wish. As of this morning, we've raised $11,422. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We are trying to raise $50,000 this year. And so the way that our quilting charity So Along works is starting in February, 2021, Every two weeks, we're gonna give you new patterns. There's a total of seven patterns. You can kind of see them in the rows behind us. We have a quilt kit. It does come in a keepsake box that will ship late January. Now with this sew along, um, the kits, I'm just letting you know in advance, they could come one or two days after the sew along starts because of a delay. And you're gonna start seeing a lot more delays um, because supply chain is kind of trickling down now. Mm -hmm. um, and the fabric collection is Spring Brook by Corey Yoder. And so this is gonna be a completely free sew along where we just ask you to donate maybe $5 for the use of each pattern. And um, all the money goes directly to Make-A-Wish. Lily has put a link in if you wanna donate. So I wanted to go over that one more time, but now I'm happy to answer any questions and I am gonna go over real quick before, I'm gonna go over fabric collections ship dates because of everything going on. So the way that Moda works, not all companies do this the same. Moda ships the yardage and the pre-cuts on different days. The reason why is they are physically in two different warehouses. So they don't leave the same warehouse. So obviously they're not gonna ship together because they're not in the same warehouse. So I've gotten a lot of questions on some upcoming collections. So I'm gonna go over the estimated ship dates that we have right now from our manufacturers. Line Works is Tula Pink. We will have more pre-cuts and yardage the middle of next week. Blooming Bunch, the yardage is going to be loaded today or tomorrow. And the pre-cuts will be next week. I would say, actually, it'd probably be a week after next, okay. if that's the date they give us. Mm -hmm. Folk tail yardage is in stock. So for folk tail quotation, figs and shirtings, and a blooming bunch, pre-cut, all of those yardage is in stock. Pre-cuts will ship in one to two weeks, maybe even longer. And a blooming bunch will be online tomorrow. It is, it is physically arriving but it will not be online till today or tomorrow. Cider, the yardage is in stock, the pre-cuts will not come until the very last week of December or the first week of January. Girl Power by Riley Blake and Bittersweet Lane, yardage by Moda, those will be online late next week. Now I'll answer any questions. Nice. I'm actually gonna move my little um, chair too. Oh yes. Oh, oh, someone was asking what I stuff my pillows with since I showed those. Those are actually pillow forms that came with some old pillows I had, and I just reused them. They are 14 inch, I think, square pillows. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Beck, Beth Deck was asking, is that book beginner friendly? I'm not sure if they were asking about Shine On or Prim and Proper. But they both are, um, I would say they're both beginner friendly. The hardest block in Shine On is that butterfly block, but if you just make it bigger and trim it down, it'll be fine. And everything in Lori's book is corner square triangles or half square triangles or flying geese. It's nothing crazy. And all of our books are printed in color. So that is also very helpful when you're piecing, especially if you're new. Mm -hmm. 
From Crafting a Plan Life, does the full kit ship at once or will it be sent each month? I think she's asking about Sobiro. Okay, so Serendipity Quilt Kit comes in a box. That's the one behind me. It comes in a box that will ship at one time. Now, in that box, stuff comes from like five vendors. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying it might ship slightly after the sew along starts because we do have a delay on one item that we already know about. The sew by row is going to be a block of the month and the first month you get the booklet and the fabric to make the scissor row. And then the next month you get the, the um, tomato pin cushions and then the next month you get to make the sewing machines. And so that one is a block of the month. And Kim Patterson said, Cherry from Quilting Life mentioned in her video that she is doing another block of the month in 2021. Good. Ooh. So, yes. And she has one from 2019. Oh. So, if you want one that's free, I didn't make that one, but there's also that one, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll have to email her and see. Mm. So, I can color it. Yes. That's exciting. Okay. Oh, Stitching with the Sisterly says, beginner or not, the prim and proper instructions are well written. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and she also gave us a super chat for $19.99. And she put, the best way I can describe it is like a video game controller that's got its arms up and it's going woot. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. And Robin Jones says, does Kimberly have any opinions on the straight magic pins with the comfort grips? Okay, so I think they're by Taylor Seville. I like them for when I'm piecing a backing or something where I don't want the pins just flopping everywhere. For general piecing, I just use regular skinny pins, but I do like those for backing um, just because I feel like when I'm when I pin my backings that my pins my pins that I use kind of go everywhere So I do have those and I do use it for the backings Just because they're not going to come out like when you're doing a backing say it's all like a big long thing and then you kind of Put it together kind of What do you like you put it all together the pins just start flying out? I feel like when you move it mm -hmm. so having those in when you have all those layers, it's less likely to come out and then you're less likely to step on it. Okay. If that, I don't know if that makes sense, but it's just, that's what I found they work for best for me. Mm -hmm. Victoria Lopez is asking, do your wrists ever hurt after cutting so much? No, no, <laughs> <laughs> but I love cutting. Um, that's my favorite part. So no, my back hurts all the time. That's what hurts. So everybody's kind of different. My wrists don't ever hurt, but my back always hurts. Mm -hmm. Like right now it's, ooh. But I have Tylenol in my desk. Oh. Uh, someone had been asking also if we had maybe pillow forms we would recommend uh, for if your back is hurting or pillow forms that help with that. Oh, I don't use any. But mm -hmm. I am um, in my chair at, ho at work. I have a little pillow on the bottom that I sit on. It's just a pillow that I made like probably eight years ago. Lily was probably still in college. <laughs> like, but I don't have one that I recommend for um, like ergonomics or. No, we do have a, it's called the sit upon. Sit upon. Uh -huh. that, I really like that thing. That helps me a lot. Um, it's like plastic with air, right? Yeah, it's like, it's filled with air. My chiropractor recommended it to me actually, so. It's like, oh. yeah, it's actually good. Um, and there's different brands of them, but we actually carry that one. Uh, and it's really helps your back because you kind of start moving around and wiggling around and getting your back moving a little bit, I guess, helps it. So when you're sewing or when you're working or when you're whatever? Uh, when I am working because I sew standing up. You do? I do. <laughs> Why? I have a standing desk at home. Oh, okay. So, so it's all like, it's easy. Yeah, that same height. So it's all easy yeah oh my gosh yeah, i actually custom made it for myself side story um <laughs> oh my goodness anyways i think i would fall down <laughs> and denise kennedy vasak says for your beginners quilt along would you recommend cutting all of the fabric for all the blocks first i, I would do block by block mm -hmm. is that what you were gonna say uh yeah i was gonna clarify ultimate beginner series okay yes on that one i would do block by block mm -hmm. I think that's how we showed it when we filmed it. Uh, Nancy Rogers said, when figs and shirtings, when will figs and shirtings pre-orders kit ship? So if you pre-ordered it. So a kit 
that is that would be considered a pre-cut ships mm -hmm. with pre-cuts that would be one to two weeks basically the dates that moda has given us is no is december 7th through december 11th mm -hmm. that's the date they're gonna ship mm -hmm. but then it has to get on a truck and come to us and um we get everything freight so it doesn't always come the next day sometimes it comes and with freight trucks especially now it might come might not Everything's kind of a mess right now in the world um, with shipping because so much, st everyone is shipping everything now, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to get on a truck. What if another company wants to pay more for the truck? Well, then your truck doesn't go. It's all very complicated. Let's just say that. Karen Crozier says, thanks for all the updates. Do we know about the My Favorite Color is Moda? Okay, that has, it has not been on the list yet, so that means it's going to be a while. It wasn't, so Moda sends out to us every week on like a Monday or Tuesday a sh estimated ship date, and that's the ship date they use in their warehouse. We just asked them to send it to us. That hasn't popped up yet. So kind of, you know, it kind of like, that means it's not here yet. But I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the panel. I'm excited about the running yardage. I'm super excited about that item. Mm -hmm. All right, and from Donna Rabori Momberger, will you get Primitive Gatherings binding needles? I... Yep. Okay. So Primitive Gatherings needles come from Moda, and um, they should be any day. I think they're in stock. Mm -hmm. We order them from Moda anyway. Yeah. Oh, and then, uh, this is a question for everyone in the chat, but it's from Lori, and Lori says to Lori Holt, did y'all watch the Q&A with me and Kimberly when she was here? Comment below if you did. I did. I was waiting up to watch that video that day. You were? Yeah, I wanted to see what, how, how your guys' time was, what you guys had to say. Oh my gosh, I went to Lori's house. It was so fun. I almost cried when Lori gave me a shout out. I'll say that. Oh my god. <laughs> I was like, oh. Yeah, it was so fun. I mean, we really didn't do, it was totally different than what we normally do, but it was so fun. And it, I really just needed that. I just needed to get out of here for a little bit. Um, I haven't had a vacation, which nobody has. Like, I mean, don't feel sorry for me. I could care less if I have a vacation. I just needed a mental break. And um, I mean, there was a time where I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to go check in a hotel for one day to have quiet, quiet time. I never did, but that was my, in the middle of COVID crisis. I was like, I'm having a midlife crisis. I need to get out of this house. That's funny. All right, and then uh, one more time, because I see a few people were asking, the cushion for your booty is called the Sit-Upon. It is by Gypsy Quilter. And then a few people are asking pillow forms that you can use in general. I think the ones we carry are Crafter's Choice. Yeah, so we use Crafter's Choice, and it's basically the same thing you can get at Joann's. Mm -hmm. um, so you can get a pillow form at Joann's, you can get it from us, you can get it um, from anywhere. and. Some people, so like if, I don't even remember what size block this is. Well, I can look. So this is 18 inches. Mm -hmm. So you can put an 18 inch pillow in here, but if you want it super puffy, you can put a 20 inch pillow in. And that's what Lori does and it makes it super puffy. But I think I put an 18 inch in here. Mm -hmm. Actually, I didn't do any of it, Lily did it. Lily, do you remember what you did? I have no idea. It was like three weeks ago. I don't, yeah, no, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember what we did. I can't remember either, so. <laughs> I usually do the size that the pillow is. I usually don't go up. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I'm not picky about brand on pillows, but the one thing like Lily said is if I do have something left over, like, or I'm not using it anymore, I'll save it and then you can put it in as long as it doesn't have like black, like, you know, black or something that's gonna see through. Mm -hmm. And this one really wouldn't matter because it's got it's quilted, so it's got batting. Mm -hmm. So because of that, you could put any kind of pillow. You don't have to buy a pillow form. You could use a leftover. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So guys, thanks for watching. I will be back, or Lily and I will be back next Friday, the normal time. Yes. Thank you for um, watching today. Sorry that I had to move it. And I hope you guys have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week. Bye, everyone.